Power Boat Television, North America's premier boating show. Here's this week's Mercury Marine My Boat feature. You know, by the looks of this swim platform, you may guess that it's about 20 years old, and you'd be right. But you may not guess that I actually sanded this down and gave it a fresh coat of oil just last year. But those of you who know Teak probably aren't surprised. It looks great, but the upkeep can be a pain. So that's why this week on my boat, I'm gonna build an entirely new fiberglass platform and top it with a cork material to keep that Teak look. The first step was to draw the new pattern onto the high density Kusa board. This composite material is lighter than plywood, but works the same. Then I marked the rough outline for the platform and began cutting. Using our Bosch hole saw kit, I was able to start my platform handles that I would finish off with the jigsaw. To beef up the edges of the platform, I cut some extra one inch strips to go around the edges. Along with that, I doubled up the platform where it would mount to the boat. After a quick wipe down to clean the surface of any dirt and dust, it was time to mix the compound. We like to use mass epoxies on our projects, so I had a low viscosity resin, a slow hardener, as well as some cabosil and phenolic micro balloons to create an epoxy used for bonding that could also be sanded. Start with a 2 to 1 mixture of resin to hardener, then add enough cabosil and micro balloons till you are left with a peanut butter consistency. Then you can go to town. Once the compound was dry, I gave it a quick sand to level it all off. I then used a router and a half inch bit to create a round edge on the platform. After another quick wipe down, it was time to start the fiberglass. I started first with a coat of resin. Then I laid out the 1808 glass matting and rolled out more resin until it was saturated. Be sure to use a dedicated fiberglass roller to roll out any air bubbles as you go. When the bottom side had dried, I used a multi-tool and a fiberglass bit to cut down any of the rough overhang. I then sanded it down for a smooth edge. People get intimidated by fiberglass, but it really is no different than wood. With the bottom complete, it was time to move on to the top. First by cutting out the pattern in the matting, and then start with laying the resin. Once dry and the platform was fared and flat, it was time to paint. I started first with an Interlux Epoxy Prime Coat. It's a multi-purpose primer that can even cover up gel coat cracks. Once dry, I gave a quick sand and then wiped down with 2333N reducing solvent and applied another coat. Then I finished off with Interlux Perfection two-part paint. It's a high performance paint that resists abrasion and UV wear. You want to do at least two or three coats with this, hand sanding with 320 grit paper in between. But you notice there is some print through of the fiberglass, but that's okay because we'll be covering that up. So now we're ready for the final step of our install and that's to finish off the project with our new C cork material. And Graham, we're just getting started here on the, the main measurements. That's right. We just want to take a couple of quick measurements to get our center line correct before we start cutting any material. Sure. Um, we want to be on the money for cutting material. You don't want to be too short. You don't want to be too much because then you get wastage. Using the center line as a start point, we worked out from there. The C cork was extremely light and very easy to work with compared to other synthetic products. With the pieces cut, we began adding the black silicone that gives the teak look that people love. Once the silicone is dry, you can begin to sand it down so only the channels are filled. Next step was to cut the border pieces and lay them out roughly. From here, you're able to glue all the pieces together. Once the glue cures, the channels are taped off and the silicone is added for a uniform look. And while it may not look much at the start, a few passes with some 80 grit sandpaper brings it all together. And the final step is to seal the cork off with the supplied sealant. 
Well, with that last coat of sealer, the project is done, and I gotta say, I am more than happy with the results. A project like building your own swim platform may seem intimidating on the surface, but really if you take it one step at a time, it's something that you can do in your garage. The biggest thing that takes is time. So not only do I have a new, bigger platform that's gonna last, but it looks great as well.